Hello, it's Keith here and welcome to the Hello World series. Today we're going to be looking at the Amiga on the 68000. Now, of course, the Amiga is the very standard system that unfortunately I never owned as a kid, so I'm not that familiar with it. But I've managed to get a Hello World example going today. This is my second one. My first one was bitmap based, but this time we're going to go real low level and we're going to do it in basically what is the equivalent of MS-DOS on the Amiga. So let's have a look at the example we're going to be doing today. And here it is. So if I just fire this up and I specify the Amiga here, you can see my emulator is starting up here. And if I type, oh, I'll just turn off warp mode and type start, you can see we've got a hello world message on the screen just here. And I've got two mouse cursors, which is quite confusing. Anyway, that's not a problem. Let's have a look at the code we're running. So here's the code. It's a little bit longer than maybe you'd expect, or at least a bit longer than I would have expected, but that's what we've got here. So we're going to go over this and I'm going to try and explain how this works. So what we've done here is we're using the operating system to just show to the command line. Now, when our system starts up, we need to actually open a connection to the disk operating system of the Amiga. Now, the first thing we're doing here is we are loading the address of this label DOS name here, and we're loading a library called DOS.library here. And this is what gives us access to the command line of the system. Now, you can see we're loading this into A1 here. We're loading a zero into D0. And then we're loading the address of the exec function here. And we are loading that in from memory address 4 here into A6. We're then using the command exec open library here. And we are effectively using the offset of minus 552 from the address we read in here. And that will return the DOS base in D0 here. And we're just backing that up in some memory here. Now you can see this is known as the chip RAM. The chip RAM is the sort of base system memory of the Amiga, not the extended memory. And that has some special functions. So we are loading that into there for later. Once we've got that, we're also loading it into A6 because we're now going to use a command within that DOS handle. And we are now going to basically open the DOS command here. So we are just specifying the name of the parameter we want to open. We want to open the console stream here. We're specifying that. And we're specifying this parameter here. And we are just specifying that we want to open it with this minus 30 here, passed into A6, which is the DOS handle that we loaded in in this first request here. A bit of a pain, but now we have a good DOS handle. And we've also got a console handle in D0, and we back that console handle up again to another label here. And that's what we're going to use to print our characters. Now, our print string routine isn't the most efficient. I know it's not the most efficient. It, it, these examples are just get something on screen as quickly as possible, because in my tutorials, they're primarily aimed at gaming, people writing their own little games. And so this is just the easiest way to get some characters on the screen. When you want to do things quickly and get graphics on the screen, I do that in the graphics modes. So this was just a very crude example here. So what I'm doing here is I'm using the same print string routine from all of my other tutorials. It just uses print char routine repeatedly until it gets to a character 255 at the end of a string. And it uses this print character routine here. So how does this print character routine work? Well, again, it's using an operating system call. It's using DOS write within the DOS handle that we opened before, and that's command minus 48 here within that DOS handle. But that routine uses a string of characters. Now, we just want to print a single character, but it, we do have to move that into some kind of memory buffer. So we've defined a single byte buffer just here for that purpose. So when print char is executed, D0 will hold the single byte character we want to show. So we're moving that into that buffer. We're then loading the DOS handle we read in before into A0, the console handle we read before into D1, and then we're loading the address of the character buffer into D2 here. And then we're loading the length, which is just a single byte, into D3. So this has now got the, all of the information that we need to run that DOS write command minus 48 here. That will print our character, albeit rather slowly. But that's easy enough to get things working. Now, when we want to do a new line, we just print a character 13, then a character 10, and that will print the new line for us. You can see when it comes to the print string, we're just repeatedly running that print character routine just here. So that's what we're doing here. It, it's not great, but as I say, it, it's a very basic example. It's enough. And um, let's just have a look at how we actually compile that and get it running on an emulator. So this is the command script I use. 
you can ignore most of this. A lot of this is just extra error checking because this is part of my downloads. And so I'm trying to add extra checking to make sure people have extracted the archives correctly, the emulator setup right. But if you're working on your own system, hopefully you've got that kind of thing sorted out already. So you would actually just need really this one line here. Now we're using Vassum in this example here. And we're specifying because it's a batch file, this percent build file percent is the source file we're compiling. So this will be your hello world.asm. I'm specifying to check labels. Now this is a handy thing. Within Vasm, if we make a mistake and if we forget our tab here, this return would be treated as a label. Now that's almost certainly a mistake. So it will check if a label is suspiciously named like a command and it will tell us we're being quite silly. Um, and so that's something that helps me, saves me a lot of time because I am often quite silly. Now, another thing we're doing here is we're disabling case sensitivity because as well as forgetting tabs, I also make mistakes with case. That's the perils of being a Windows user, not a Linux one, I think. But anyway, uh, I'm very poor with my case sensitivity, so I just turn off case sensitivity and get, get the problem out of the way. Now, we've got these commands about creating a kick hunk here, and we're defining the file format as hunk exe. This is nothing to do with um, hunky men. This is the file format that Amigas seem to like executing. Not an Amiga person, don't understand it, but that's what we have to create if we want the Amiga to actually run things for us, and we certainly do. So we're specifying we want that hunky exe file for us. I'm creating a label. I'm creating a symbol Vasum here and defining it as one. I create another one called a build Ami here, build Amiga. Um, the Vasum one is just in case I decide to work with multiple assemblers later. Sometimes you have to have conditional co sections that only compile on one. So that's just something that, uh, edging my bets here, I used to do that with the um, Amstrad CPC when I started with WinApe and Vasum, I was using two assemblers. And Build Amiga is because some of my code is multi-platform. But that Hello World example you just saw isn't, so you won't need that. But it's in, the, in my code, so I'm just showing it here. I'm outputting a listing file. This will contain the source ASM code and the destination bytecode together. And this is quite handy if you're having trouble, maybe things aren't compiling the way you expect. In the past, I've found out that um, Vasm was assembling things and uh, doing some optimization I didn't realize about. And I was trying to make things that would fail and they weren't failing because it was fixing my mistakes, my intentional mistakes, which wasn't good for my learning experience. Also, if you do very complex things with calculations on labels, maybe during the two passes that the assembler works, the calculations will malfunction. And so things might not happen how you expect. So they can be handy, but as a beginner, if the assembler you're using doesn't output a listing, it's probably not going to matter because it's only when you start to understand things a bit more, you'll know what you're seeing in that file. Of course, what is more important is we output a file. So we're outputting a file called start here in the release folder. Now, one slight trick I'm doing is I'm copying the start file to a W file. Now you might have noticed before the warp mode is Alt and W. So um, what I tend to do to get the thing started really quickly is I start the emulator up with warp mode already enabled. That's an option you can set in the settings file. I turn on warp mode off with Alt W, press W, hit enter, then press Alt W again, and that gets the program started as quickly as possible. We'll see that again in just a minute. Okay, so that's how we can build our file, but that's not enough to actually run it. What we need to do, if I just go to here, if I go to MU here, and I go to my FSUAE here and my launcher. Now, what I've done is I've basically saved a configuration file here with all of the settings predefined in it. And the setting that's really important for me is I've defined a hard drive as the folder rel ami, release Amiga. And this is how I'm compiling to a disk image for the Amiga as quickly as possible. I'm also defining some custom settings relating to that warp, which I don't think you can even see in here. But as I say, that's the way I'm doing things. And that helps me get started as quickly as possible. And if you're working on a system like I am with the Amiga, which you're not really that familiar with, you're probably going to make a few mistakes. And the faster you can make those mistakes and fix them, the better all round. So I do try and make sure my emulator starts as fast as possible and gets running code as fast as possible. And that's how I'm doing it today. Now, as part of these tutorials, after we've done the Hello World, I do a slightly extended example where I show how to do my very basic monitoring tools, which are what I use on all of the systems I program for to get started. Because a lot of the emulators I'm working with don't have debuggers and monitor tools. And to be honest, even if they do, I often don't understand them because 
I cover so many systems, I've never read the documentation, if I'm honest. So um, I write my own and I make do with those. And I thought as a nice follow on to the very basic Hello World, it was very easy for me to get these working as well. So we might as well share those and maybe you'll find some useful. Anyway, let's fire it up and have a go. And we'll also see me using that W here. So I'm just starting the emulator here. Now I'm pressing Alt W and that's disabled the warp mode here. I'm probably a little bit early there. If the warp mode's enabled here, you see, I can't type. So I do have to turn it off when we get to the command prompt and then turn it on again. And we're getting that text a little bit faster now, thanks to the warp mode. You can see it says that bottom warp mode enabled. Okay, I'll just turn warp mode off again and we'll have a look at what we've got. So we've got our hello world here with this kind of very confusing mouse cursor, which is driving me crazy. We've got the contents of all our registers here, the program counter, the CCR here, which is effectively the flags, and also a dump of some of the memory here, which is very boring, got nothing in it. But you can see anyway, it worked. And these would be the ASCII code if there was any ASCII to see. But there is no ASCII to see today, so let's just get that out of the way. Anyway, you can see there we've managed to create a very simple example hello world message. We've managed to do a dump of all of the registers onto the screen. And I would hope that would be quite helpful to you if you were getting started with the Amiga. Now, these tutorials aren't really about writing programs. I'm intending you to write a few little games. So obviously we're going to move out to bitmap graphics pretty quickly, I would have thought. So that was just a very early example. I've already done a bitmap graphics example showing a hello world message in the bit, in the Amiga on the bitmap screens and also using those same monitors. So you can take a look at that in the platform specific series if you want. The other thing is we're going to continue in what's known as the super simple series with some simple bitmap graphics, this using the Amiga again and again starting from a single ASM file that you can easily run at home. Okay, well, I hope you found this interesting. All these examples are available for download on my website along with all of the scripts and things so please go ahead and get those if you want. I've already got a playlist of the videos on the Amiga on my YouTube channel and all of this is documented on my website as well so please go ahead and have a look at that. If you feel that you want to move to something else I've got loads of the 68000, Z80 and 6502 systems covered so please have a look around see if there's anything else that interests you. Anyway whatever you decide to do I hope you're going to enjoy programming and I hope you'll have some fun with the Amiga. Anyway, thanks for watching today and goodbye.